In this video, I'm gonna talk about capacity management in one of the most agile oriented module of big picture, the board module. So we're gonna talk about how to, uh, how the capacity is calculated and how can we modify it from sprint to sprint or in general uh, throughout whole project life cycle. This video is part of our effort to deliver best possible training around Jira, Confluence and whole Atlassian ecosystem. If you want to support us, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave the comment if you have any further questions or ideas for the further videos. And remember that you can always reach out to us for paid services like trainings, consultations, or even tool implementations. All right, so let's now jump into our topic. Uh, so I'm displaying big picture, the board module. As I mentioned, this is the one that is, I think the most focused in big picture around agile way of working. So over here, we have two, we have three iterations that basically represents sprint, represent sprints. And there are some tasks planned for this iteration. So first iteration is already closed. Second one is in progress. And the third one is to, in status to do. So over here, you can see several things already. So in each iterations, we have different swim lanes. So we have a swim lane for the tasks that do not have assigned team. And we have three swim lanes for different teams. Each of these swim lane has its own information about capacity. Uh, we can change display of this information. So at the moment, this is uh, capacity allocation. It is displayed in story points. We could look at work progress, but for now and in this video, we're interested mostly in capacity. So we are displaying capacity in story points. This is the most often used uh, uh, metric for estimation in Agile. Okay, so we have information for each team, how many story points were allocated for given iteration and what is capacity of each team, right? Uh, over here, we are nearly full for the team. So 91% allocation over here, we over allocate the, this team, but still this iteration is closed. Those two tasks are closed. So it looks that despite the fact that they were over allocated, they managed to deliver. And here at the top, we have the overall uh, capacity and allocation. So sum of all the work for all the teams and also tasks that are unassigned and capacity from all the teams. Uh, so this is what we see. And we see this information for all the iterations that we have over here. So now the question where these numbers are coming from. So I think that for allocated work, this is pretty straightforward. So it comes from the task. You can see that over here, I have two tasks. One of them estimated three story points, second one, five in total eight, right? So this is pretty straightforward, but things get interesting when we look at the capacity. So this capacity is initially calculated by big picture. So you initially do not have to set this up. Uh, this is based on the team teams and, and their capacity. So let's have a look at the teams. You can see over here, I have three teams. Two of them have just one member. Uh, one team has two members and both of these members are working for hundred percent. So basically, uh, in big picture, there are also work plans, holiday plans that define how many hours per day people work. Uh, and based on that and the information about how many for how many percent they are assigned to the team, uh, big picture knows how many hours per week person has. So basically their weekly capacity. So this is first thing. Second thing is that big picture knows how long the sprint is, right? So if they have weekly capacity, if a uh, big picture has a weekly capacity and the length of a sprint, let's say two weeks, we know how many hours per day, uh, per day, or actually per sprint, uh, user has. Okay. But now the question I'm talking about hours and here there are story points. 
what gives how story points are being calculated based on the depth and actually in the configuration setting of a box in the resources there is option to calculate how much time is one story point so in my case pretty strange value usually this is one day but in my case each two and a half days of user's capacity is calculated to one story point so basically based on capacity of craftsman team that was in hours big picture calculated how many story points uh, of of capacity the team has so uh, there are good and bad things about that there are several things we need to talk about so first of all in general that kind of calculation uh, that we click just take uh, the amount of hours that person hasn't directly calculated it, this to story points is not the best one. Story points should be more abstract. So one, so story point from the task that has one story point is not the same as, or putting it otherwise, five tasks estimated for for one story point is not the same amount of work like one task that has five story points. But still, this is good impact and some good uh, information for the beginning because later, and we will talk about that, we will be modifying these values. So uh, you will see that. So this is good input, not the perfect one. I wouldn't rely on this 100% and in the future only on this. Uh, but as a start place where we can when, where we can uh, kick off our work with these numbers, this is pretty good. And that way of calculating initially capacity in story points has also, for me, it is an upside. For some, this is the downside. But if person leaves the team, the capacity changes. So basically the number, for example, in the next sprint can be different than in previous one because, for example, at certain point in time, person leaves the team. The same happens if person is on a holiday. So if we have five member team and two of the members are on, on holiday, have, have are not working for the whole sprint, basically 40% of capacity will be decreased. So if you want just to rely on this calculation time to story points this is pretty nice because it actually reflects reality right person is not working their capacity won't be included in the team uh, but in some cases uh, people or, or scrum masters do not want to change the capacity of the team especially if it's, it is just like one or two days that person is off and remember, even that small small uh, changes would impact this number if we will just rely on calculation. But very often I've seen that if person is one or two days off during the iteration and everyone is working uh, whole iteration, then Scrum, Scrum Masters and teams in general do not really want to affect the numbers over here. Uh, they just uh, assume that this is not, not uh, big enough impact uh, on on capacity to reflect this over here but you can see that if we do that kind of change so maybe we change the team membership or maybe we change some someone's workload plan workload plan and so on all the iterations in the future that are basing on this calculation will be affected so this is something important uh, because there are two ways to impact these numbers. There is a way that impacts everything, all the iterations in the future, and there is a way that impacts just single iterations, which we'll discuss now. So imagine this, this situation. Big picture calculated initial capacity of the team. That's good. So you can start working with that. But after several iterations or sprints, you see that Teams is delivering more and more work, right? So we can go over here to reports. Mine will not be that full, but you can see that over here that in iteration one, I delivered eight story points out of uh, 7.2 capacity. Uh, probably you would like to make that decision on, on more iteration based on more iterations, 
but let's assume that this is a trend. We are seeing that our team is delivering more than their capacity, even maybe more from iteration to iterations because they are getting better at, at delivering stuff, working together, removing obstacles, right? So you want to change the capacity. Uh, this is pretty standard approach, right? In Scrum, for example, after each release, we can actually check what is the velocity of the team and accordingly modify capacity or accordingly plan a next uh, sprint. So this is what you would do. And in theory, you could go to teams and try to change the capacity of a team over there. Maybe increase person's efficiency, maybe change worker fund, but all that has other consequences. We won't get into this in depth, but this is not the best way. What is the best way? So you may have noticed that if I hover over here, there is actually an icon, edit team capacity, right? So I can click over here and simply say that, okay, in this sprint, we are able to do 16 story points. This team is able to do 16 story points and this, this will do four because they said that, yeah, last time they delivered three and they had sufficient time to, to work some more, let's say four story points. So now I updated this, this value just for one sprint. You will see that here, over here, the number is calculated. So we can pretty simply edit capacity for each sprint based on what happened in previous sprint, right? So uh, this is really easy, manual, but also gives us a lot of flexibility. If we know that half of our team is sick for next iteration, they won't be here. We can manually say that, okay, half of the points is okay. We could leave it to big picture. If we put absences in big picture, uh, it would work. It would just cut in half, but we can also do that manually. Uh, so changing values from over here is one thing, but we could click over here. There is a capacity planning option here and we have iterations here. We have swim lanes for teams. We can drill down into these teams and see uh, values from the user. So basically what capacity each user is providing for the team. And you can see that I have some highlighted elements over here. This is because this feature is enabled, highlight changes. Uh, and it shows me what was manually changed. So because I changed manually uh, just a moment ago, capacity of the team, it is now highlighted, right? So the things that I changed are highlighted or underscored with this hard line. The things that were impacted by this change, so the total capacity, is shown as this uh, as this uh, dashed line. Yeah. Okay. So I could revert the change. So I will click over here. I made a mistake. I will revert this, but I can do the change on the user level. So let's say that this will be four. This will be 12. We are 16 again. And you can see that these two elements are now highlighted we see that they were changed, the capacity of a team is impacted and the total capacity is impacted. The result is in the end the same. So from iteration to iteration, based on our team velocity and on our ju just on our uh, on, on awareness of what is happening with team, maybe some members are off, uh, we can from iteration to iteration modify these values, but also if, for example, we change that because half of our team members were away and they returned earlier than we thought, or maybe there was a high risk they will be uh, not available when we were doing the planning, that's why we decreased this value. But it turns out they will be able, we can pretty easily restore value to the one calculated by big picture and yeah, live with that, maybe do, do the replanning or just start looking at another iteration. So you can see that managing capacity inboard module by itself is pretty straightforward. We usually see that more problems are coming with properly managing team memberships 
and capacity of individual users, so worker plant, holiday plants, and so on. So the information based on which Big Picture initially calculates uh, the capacity of the team in the board module. So if you need help with that, or if you need help with anything else Agile uh, in Jira, let us know, feel free to contact us. We will be happy to help. And that will be it for this video. Hear you in the next one.